A little while back, I reviewed a 3D printer that was on Kickstarter and it didn't work. It wasn't, it was a mess. But it was based on the design of a company called Easy 3 d And when I contacted them and said, hey, these guys look like they're using your printers as some kind of partnership, they said, oh, we know, we're suing them. Yikes. But they also said, hey, we've got a 3D printer that we want you to check out that we are sure is going to work better than that piece of garbage. This is the Easy 3 d K7, their newest budget 3D printer. And if you buy it on their AliExpress site, it only costs $80. But I thought, hey, I'll at least check it out and maybe it'll be good enough to, I don't know, at least have the novelty of it. And what I discovered surprised me. In fact, I had such a good time with this printer that I just, I took a lot of pictures and videos as I was working on it. Let's pull out the old slideshow and let's watch as we check out my adventures with the K7. All right, so right here I'm unboxing it and I was immediately impressed as I opened up the box, there's a full color manual waiting for me. This is amazing. That's a huge win. Then I did a first print and I actually sliced this first print myself. I didn't go with the ones on the card, but I made a mistake. I had the settings wrong in Cura and the skirt went too far. I had it set for 120 millimeters and this is only a hundred millimeter bed. See, normally when a 3D printer does this, when you tell it to go too far, it hits the edge and it stutters as the stepper motors just can't push it any farther. This machine seems to be aware of its bounds and when it hit it, it just stopped moving gracefully, quietly. I don't even see that in Marlin machines. Wow. Also that gave me an opportunity to check the dimensions of the printer block. Printer blocks are supposed to be 16 millimeters on each side. And when I measured this one, the X, exactly 16 millimeters. The Y, close enough for me and the Z, yeah. yeah, it's off in the Z. So let's talk about leveling the build plate on the EV3K7. According to the manual here, we start by pressing the home button, then turn off the power, then move it around to the various points by hand. And I have here my handy dandy little post-it note to check it because I'd like the sticky to be on top because it gives me a little bit of friction beyond my finger. Okay, let's do this. First, we press the home button. Okay, okay now it's homed. And then we, um, we, uh, huh. There's no power button. There's no way to turn it off except to, uh, or just uh, yank out the power supply. Okay, well, all right. Now I guess I guess what we do is we move the build plate by hand. That that point's good. Now let's let's just slide the Y over. Oh, that does not feel good. Well, let's let's move the X over. Oh, oh my goodness, it feels like I'm breaking it. I mean, I know I'm not. It just despite being off, the motors don't feel like they have disengaged. I started a big print. That big print took some time to finish. I checked on it a couple of times. It just chugged along without problems. And then boom, it finished the Chibi Mall Elephant. Now looking at this print, I am noticing that it has some under extrusion that is manifesting itself in the creases of the ear. That's a slicer setting. I have to fiddle with that and figure it out. At this point, I wanted to go back and print some more printer block, but testing it, scaling it in the Z just a little bit so I could get a perfect printer block off of this thing. And in doing so, my first print, I just printed like I normally do, just with a skirt and it was squishing the skirt, which means between the time that I leveled the bed for that first print and during the big print, the print bed had gone off level again. That's frustrating. That means that these springs aren't going to keep your bed level over time and that you're going to have to re-level it almost with every single print. Or 
just use a raft. I hate using rafts, especially on a printer this small because rafts push out and the available print area becomes a lot smaller. But I decided for simplicity's sake, I'd print some more printer blocks on rafts. And in doing so, I was able to make a measurably accurate printer block that snaps together and pulls apart just fine, just by scaling it in the Z. You know, it's accurate in the X and Y, not in the Z, but X and Y? That's all you need for Lego bricks, right? Well, in printing the Lego bricks, I discovered a couple of problems. First of all, I noticed that the first Lego bricks that I printed, the little circles on top weren't round. And okay, that to me says that there's some backlash. In other words, when the motor starts trying to move the other direction, there's a delay before the slack in the motors actually catch up with the movement that we're trying to do. But that's when I noticed that the print bed on this, the magnetic print bed, no less, was on sideways. And when I turned it 90 degrees and put it with the little key mark on there, it snapped on harder. And I thought, well, there's the problem. I, I just messed that up and I was getting backlash as the bed wiggled. So I tried it again. Sure enough, still the same problem, still not perfectly round on the top so it wasn't the print bed it is in fact that the x and y motors on here have a little slack in their movement although what surprised me further was i was able to take a real store-bought generic brand lego and it was able to interact with them it, it couldn't snap into the legos but the legos could snap into it about this time i discovered that they have made their own slicer and it's sitting on the SD card. And the attempt on this slicer was very clearly to make something that's easier to use than Cura or other traditional slicers. And how'd they do? Well, I'm hesitant to say that a slicer is or isn't something compared to other slicers because what I'm really saying is I'm just not used to it. And what I really need to do is spend more time with this slicer, get used to it, and then if I'm used to it, does it have any features that I envy and want to see in other slicers? So let's hold off judgment on their new slicer. At least they're trying and I'm kind of super excited about that. Now, you might have noticed, but this is a direct drive. There's no motor externally that's pushing it through a long Bowden tube. It goes right in and gets pulled in right here and direct drives sometimes, oftentimes, have an advantage over Bowden printers that they print flexible filaments real easy. Wouldn't it be amazing if this 3D printer could do flexibles? I started with some Polymaker Polyflex 95, 95 short. This stuff is barely flexible. If you only print one shell or just the shells and no infill, it works. And it's kind of flexible. You can squish that low poly megalodon just like a squishy toy. Okay, it can do flexibles. What if I do something a little bit softer? I move to Polyflex 90. This is slightly softer. Again, I printed it with no infill so that it'll be squishy and it printed like a champ. Dare I go for the Ninja Flex? It handled Ninja Flex like a champ. What in the world is this printer? Now, admittedly, it was really, really hard to get it off the build plate. And I don't know if that's because the build plate wasn't level and it squished too much or if Ninja Flex just really bonds to the whatever the heck their build plate is, but it worked. It was functional and the tail was squished after printing. Wow. What do you think? I mean, that is amazing. Now, I do have to admit that as good as this experience was, I can't say that this is a perfect printer. This is a printer where for the price has a double meaning because for the price, you really can't expect it to be a great 3D printer. If it just functions bare minimally, that's about all that you can expect for a printer from this price. But for the price, it really delivers on more than it even promises. And that, that impressed me a whole lot. It's not perfect. If we're talking about downsides, we've already talked about the fact that it's not accurate. It's also 
really, really slow. Its top movement speed is maybe 10 millimeters per second, maybe even slower than that, which is maybe why flexibles work so well in it because it just moves slowly. Also, it does this weird thing where when a print finishes, it homes back and to the bottom, but that intersects the print head with the print area. And if it's something like a large elephant chibi mall and it can't go through it because it's a hard plastic, it'll just stop above there, but still it's kind of weird. And if it's, you know, a soft Ninja Flex low poly dyno, then it will squish it aside and go over there. Also, it homes so close to that screw that pulling off the print bed is sometimes kind of difficult when the head is parked. And I, I wish that they would just not do that. When the print finishes, there's no reason for it to park in that home position. Maybe that's a slicer thing. I'll have to check it out. But overall, this cheap little 3D printer amazed me. Though I do wonder who exactly it's for. At $80, it's got that beginner-friendly price. But with the needing to level it after almost every build, you wouldn't want to give this to a beginner if they weren't at least a little bit technically confident. However, if you could guide a student through this, maybe this would be a good printer for recommending for home schools. You set up a class and you say, listen, if you want to have your own 3D printer, this will work. We'll walk you through using it. We'll work with you on it to make sure that you do it. And all that hand-holding might be all that they need to get going on it. And that's a starter printer. But, and I mean... Of course, if you spend more, you can get a better printer that's easier to use, more reliable, and won't require as much fiddling. That goes under the for the cost argument. I think the bigger audience for this 3D printer is people who are already into 3D printing and want to see what the novelty of an $80 3D printer can get them. And what it gets you is a 3D printer that's admittedly small, extremely lightweight, but functional. In fact, I kind of wonder if I could put a 12 volt battery pack on this thing and make it a portable 3D printer of sorts. Hmm. But overall, the Easy 3D K7 just impressed me from beginning to end. And while it does have faults, I recommend you check it out. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.